Concluding our evening with her thesis, My Zero Pound Life, a defense for persons as nothing but the soul, please welcome Viviana Haro. If we do not know what we are, how do we know what we ought to do? In order to live the good life, we must understand who we are. But to do that, we must understand what we are. For instance, Boethius in the Constellation of Philosophy exemplifies one who understands what he is and can therefore return to his true, happy self after filling his soul with wicked thoughts due to being unjustly exiled. While in prison, Boethius dives into the depths of his soul with philosophy to remember his true beliefs and desires that make him who he is. This example leads us to the following questions. What is a person? Are we merely mental beings? Are we a composite of flesh and feelings? These are the questions philosophers have died at their desk for, dying to understand. We cannot know what our purpose is if we are blind to who and what we are. Therefore, we too must press on valiantly into the inscrutable jungle of philosophy to find our purpose, our ultimate fulfillment. What is a person? Rene Descartes, the founder of modern philosophy, answered this question by separating the soul and the body. Descartes believed that only the soul is necessary for a person to exist. Many philosophers disagree. A few believe that the non-physical soul emerged from an arrangement of physical parts. Some concluded that the body is a full person. Others presume that a person is a soul and body. I argue that substance dualism, the belief that persons are merely souls, best aligns with the truth of identity. Identity is stable, enduring, possessed, and composes who we truly are. Our soul is the home of our identity because our mental states are found in the soul. Identity is characterized by mental states such as emotions, beliefs, desires, and intentions, which can only be found in the soul. Therefore, humans are souls, because who we are lies in the soul. The way we understand our personal mental states is not through the body, but by our first-person perspective. That is, someone's private access to their mind and their perception to the world. Take, for example, the feeling of joy. The beautiful aspect about joy, or all emotions for that matter, is that it is entirely unique to the owner because we all have a different experience of joy. A first-person perspective demonstrates persons to be characterized by mental states because these states are distinct to the owner. Further, the uniqueness of one's rational experiences makes them unable to belong to somebody else or exist ownerless. Thomas Reed, the founder of the Scottish School of Common Sense, supports the idea that there is a distinct possessor of mental states which characterize the subject. He states, My personal identity, therefore, implies the continued existence of that indivisible thing which I call myself. Whatever this self may be, it is something which thinks and deliberates and resolves and acts and suffers. I am not thought. I am not action. I am not feeling. I am something that thinks and acts and suffers. We are not mental states. We are characterized by them. Characterizing persons by their mental states is necessary to indicate that we are not bodies, because we are not characterized by physical aspects. The body lacks the stability of identity through change, which makes it unfit to take part in our true self. For example, consider a ship. A ship is an aggregate of parts like the body. 
But if each part was replaced and perfectly resembled the previous ship, would it be the same ship as the first? No. There would truly be ship one and ship two. However, mental states, although they change, maintain a continuous identity because they belong to the soul, which retains possession of the same self. For it is our beliefs, desires, thoughts that reside in the soul which characterize our identity. Therefore, we persons form a distinct identity through our personal mental states. And because our soul, and because our soul carries our mental states, our soul also carries who we are by being what we are. However, many criticize substance dualism because it seems to not value the body enough. Those who believe that a person is a combination of soul and body use the argument that Jesus is a full person, yet he is only able to be fully God and fully man by taking on a physical human body. It is undeniable that God values our bodies. Jesus' body allowed the Son of God to interact with us and die for our sins. But is the body essential to our complete self? In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul describes a man caught up in the third heaven, but whether he was in or out of the body, only God knows. This verse shows that Paul agrees in the possibility of disembodiment. Moreover, the language signifies that we are something that is a full person, whether embodied or disembodied. Paul did not say that a part of the man was in the third heaven or a fragment of the man, but a man. A man who we can take as complete, even if disembodied, this point not only accounts to this man, but to all persons, because we are souls that have bodies. However, if personhood is a combination of body and soul, then personhood is set on a scale, and there is no genuine understanding of how much of the body we are, since it is physical and destructible. For example, if I lose half of my brain, am I still fully me? But on the other hand, when we place complete personhood in the soul, our identity is grounded and complete. We can be understood as our full self, even if disembodied, which alludes to the point that humans are merely souls. As we end our adventure on the philosophy of mind, I urge you to do one thing, guard your soul. Guard your mental states, emotions, beliefs, desires that characterize your identity. Who you are, your soul exists in complete fullness after the death of the body. Although you may still be hesitant that humans are merely souls, understand that the soul is a substance made fit to hold our true identity in Christ. We must strive to purify our soul in truth, in honor, in faithfulness, so that we may be identified with goodness to glorify and reign with God in the next life. Thank you.